All right, guys, you gotta check out this Ducati collection. Starting with the 851, Shri Calore. How cool is this bike? Old school, late or early 90s, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I'm not super knowledgeable on these older bikes. But very, very cool looking bike for sure. Love the paint scheme. Italian flag, essentially. Followed by the 750 F1. Same color scheme, red, white, and green. Very cool looking bike. Next, we got the 851. It says 888 on it, but it's, I believe it's an 851. This one is a, let's see, SP3, number 167. Very, very collectible piece for sure. Next, we have one of my favorite looking bikes. This is the Ducati Super Light, yellow with the white frame. Check this one. This is the 888. Super cool bike. Not sure if it's a SP2 or SP. Oh, looks like it's just a standard 888. But how cool is this? One of the old school bikes. Followed up by a very special 916. It does say 996 on the fairing, but it's actually a 916. This is a SPS 916, has the magnesium wheels, two-piece carbon airbox, carbon air runners. As you see, 916 SPS. Very, very collectible bike. And I'm not sure why it says 996 on the fairing. Maybe the engine was bored out to be a 996. Next, we have the 748L, which was the Neiman Marcus bike. Again, very special bikes. These bikes were actually sold through the Neiman, Neiman Marcus catalog. Black wheels, silver paint. Number, number one. Oh, wow, awesome. Next, we have the 916 Senna 3, which was the last one of the Senna's build. I believe it's a 1999. The black one, red wheels. Uh, I think they only made 300 of these, I believe. And this one is number, number 245, 16,000 miles. Very cool looking bike. Interesting thing about this bike is the, none of the 916 Senna's were actually ever imported to the US or sold to the US. So this was probably imported later on. Next we have a, a base 748 in yellow. Really cool looking bike. Yellow really pops out on these Ducatis. I love it. Nothing special, just a 748. Followed by the 996. This is a 996S, I believe. Has the magnesium wheels in black. Very cool. 996S with the Termis. And yes, as you see, 996S USA, 2500 miles. I like the Tricolore <laughs> paint scheme so on it. At that point, the market was collapsing and, and I'd done all this work. Very cool. And... Next, we have the 996R. This is one of my favorites probably from this collection because it's the R model. Very, very hard to get one of these nowadays. Pretty expensive. And this particular one, let's see. This particular one actually doesn't have a plaque on the triple. I believe they made 300 with numbers on the triples and another 200 after that. Looks like this is one of the 200 after, or maybe it was 500 and 200, but very special bike. 996R. <laughs> 
followed by the 998S Ben Bostrom edition. Another very, very special bike, and I'll show you why. As you guys see, when Ben Bostrom was racing, he was number 155. And this particular bike is number 155 out of 155 made. So Ducati made 155 examples of this bike for the US market. They also made two other sets of 155 for Europe and I believe for Asia. And the difference between the US bikes and the Euro bikes is that the side fairings are one piece and are carbon fiber versus the European bikes were two piece plastics. But to have number 155 out of 155, it's very, very cool love the paint scheme on it followed by the 998s troy bayless this is also one of my favorites as you guys probably know i have two of those very cool looking bike let's see what number this one is number 285 out of 400 only 126 miles so this bike has barely been written at all very cool. Always good to see the Bostrom and Bayless together. Next, we have a 999S. Looks like a 2003, I believe. Just a standard 998S. Followed by the 2003 999R Fila Edition. This one's, I think it's missing some of the side graphics. I believe it's a 999R. It's got the filler, but filler graphics were one of the coolest ones as well, too. They commemorate the super bikes from back in the days. And next to it is the 1098R. Very special bike as well. Only 400 of these ones were actually made. This one's number 280, as you see, out of 400. The cool thing about the 1098R is that they are essentially the last of the so-called analog Ducatis because after that, obviously, most of the Ducatis had a lot more electronics introduced to them, you know, wheelie control, traction control, and stuff like that. This one had a very, very primitive traction control that, you know, it's kind of like the first ones, but it's, it's sort of known as the last of the analog Ducatis, and it's... It's, uh, it's becoming very collectible, actually. Hard to find clean ones. A lot of people bought them to race them. It's really a race machine for the street. I believe they were close to 180, 200 horsepower. So a lot of power without electronics. It could get dangerous. Next, we have the MH900. Never had one of these bikes. Everybody that usually owns them says that they're amazing to ride. So hopefully one day we'll be able to add one to the collection. Super cool looking bike. Mike Hayward replica, essentially. Check out the exhaust. Very, very cool looking bike. Once again, I believe these were these were actually sold when initially the bike was released online and they made, let's see how many they made. They made 2,000 of them. This one is number 1429, but they sold out super quick online when the bike was released. Here we have one of the old school 750 Super Sport. I don't know much about it, but I know it's very, very collectible very clean bike it's not the green frame like the pole smart but still very collectible bike check out all the details there's my sign I mean this is a very collectible super clean bike made in Italy silver and blue love the colors Last but not least is the big boy, the Desmo Sedici. This is one on my list to get one day. Check this thing out. Number 625 out of 1500. Wow, this bike is amazing. MotoGP bike for the streets.
one of the coolest looking bikes Ducati has ever made <laughs> and one of the wildest looking bikes essentially this was a like I said a MotoGP bike for the streets